Hey there friends, how's it going? David Potts here with Song Notes and a lesson today where I want to show you how to play uh, the F1, the Formula One theme song on your guitar. Whether you have an electric, like I'm using here, or an acoustic, this will work, right? I'll show you how to play over a practice track later if you want, but even if you're on your couch watching FP2 or whatever, you can noodle over this. It's tons of fun, right? You're going to start off in the key of D minor and then in the second half you use the same melody. It's just sort of modulated up five frets. So you learn that melody once. Um, I'll talk about how you can just move that shape up with your left ring finger, and it's sort of a little bit more manageable than I thought it would be to get going with this one. So uh, here's how to uh, get into this, right? You see these red letters I've written in? That just refers to left ring, left middle, left index. It's sort of a shorthand to let you know which finger to use. And it's really important, I think, because that first note, right? Seventh fret of the third string. This is our home base note for this first half of the song. When we're in the key of D minor, this note is a D, okay? And you start on this note, and it's really important that you sort of, uh, your hand kind of has that feel of knowing where this note is, because you got to come into that note with confidence. All right, start it again. Okay, so this is the first note, learn it well. Third string, seventh fret, right? Left ring finger. Now, the next couple notes, index to middle on the second string, fifth to sixth fret, right? Okay, you can hammer on if you want. That's what that little uh, slur on top means. Okay, I'm just plucking it on the fifth fret, and I bring my middle finger down on the second, uh, the sixth fret, you know, bring it down firmly. It's gonna create the hammer on sound. Then you come back to that starting note, go down a whole step to the fifth fret of the third string, go down to the seventh fret of the fourth string, and then we're gonna sort of Right, we're gonna do a little slide up to the ninth fret of the fourth string. You don't wanna slide too far like I did there accidentally. So the first half, if you take it slow, okay, you can practice it without those slides at first. The slides are written up in my tab with a little slash, right? It's pretty much a fun way to play a note but not just start on the note. You know, this is, this is fine when you're starting off but eventually you get confident and you wanna kinda of you want to kind of slide in like Tom Cruise and Risky Business, right? Right, and that slide there is a good one too. You don't want to go too far, like I did, right? Whoa, don't hit the wrong string either. But then you're going to repeat that, right? And then you're going to end this, this phrase different this time. You're going to go to the second string, right? Uh, sixth fret, middle finger, and a similar thing where you play the sixth fret and then play it again, but slide up to the eighth fret. So the first two uh, real measures really, they're, it's actually a little bit long, it's four measures technically, but we're gonna say measures here, the way I have it written up, right? The first phrase. Second phrase. Okay, now here is where the song changes key, right? Modulation is the formal term. We're gonna play the same melody, but ev the melody is gonna sort of follow the key change. And now, this becomes our home bass note, the 12th fret of the third string. And from here on out, everything we do is following the same spatial pattern we just learned. Now when I say spatial pattern, what does that mean? Well, here is the fretboard, right? What we just played, we started on the root note, okay? Forget the fret numbers, just we started on a root note, we went from the second to the flat third, back to the root note, to the flat seventh, then to the fifth to the sixth. Then we repeated that, root to the second to the flat third, root, flat seven. Then we go from the flat third to the fourth, okay? Let me play it without talking and just follow with your eyes those dots, right? That's five to six and we start over on root. Okay, now we're gonna move up so that our root note is on the 12th fret of the third string, but it's the same spatial pattern. And if we follow that same pattern, right? Root, that's the five to six, root. Okay, that's the second half. I can show you the tab. Here's what the tab looks like, right? The numbers are written there, but just notice that every number is five frets higher than what you learned in the first half. When it comes to lead guitar, tabs are not as satisfying to me personally as looking at the sort of fretboard maps and seeing the pattern of notes. Because when you see that pattern, you can, it kind of reveals, hey, where, sh you know, what chord shape is this maybe coming from, right? Like a D minor in this case, uh, right? 
Anyway. Change key. Okay, now the very last note, we're gonna slide up from 11 to 13, or from 13 to 15, sorry. And you're gonna hang it on this 15th note, 15th fret of the second string, that's sorry. I like to do a little, you can sort of pluck it and slide your finger down, a nice little thing. So we're gonna chill on that note for a while while the drum fills and things reset and then things start back over on our home bass note in the key of D minor. Okay, so if you're curious about all this, again, I have it written up in my PDF. I have the tab with the fretboard maps. I also have the chords that I'm playing. If you want to sort of see that, right, um, it might be helpful for you. And I also have the scales. It's, this actually come in, not from the minor scale, but from the Dorian scale. The Dorian scale is uh, the minor scale, but the sixth is raised to be a major six. So it sounds a bit more, not purely as minor. It kind of has a bit more of a raised eyebrow, so to speak, right? You don't need to know that to play this, but if you're curious, that's in my PDF. And I also have a jam track available, which will let you practice this over and over and over again. So let me put that on, show you what it sounds like. It goes through the progression and it hangs out for about two or four measures when you're up here. And you can kind of wait, reset, get ready to go again. And just like, you know, you're running qualifying laps, you can basically, or free practice laps, whatever, you can sort of do things over again, right? And just like, if I can continue the F1 metaphors, just like when you go around the racetrack and you might mess up the chicane or whatever at the end of, of, of Spa, you have a chance to go again. And just like with guitar, you put a jam track on, it repeats, you have a chance to practice sliding up to that first note again, right? Nothing uh, is, is um, well, I was gonna say nothing is final, but I should rather say you're always gonna have a second chance, another chance. So let's, set, set, let's hear, so let's hear what the jam track sounds like. It's gonna go through things um, for about five minutes. So it's a great little bite-sized practice routine. I'm gonna count in for two measures in the jam track. So you press play, you hear me count in two measures, and then at the start of the third measure is where we begin. So get your ring finger ready, seventh fret of the third string, okay? And let us do it. One, two, two three, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you are a better lead player than me, you can solo over this. I know about one trick. Hey friends, how's it going? So a quick note about the key change that happens and how it's not been consistent year over year. So here's the deal. Uh, the graphic shows you the details here, right? This song came out in 2018. There was an orchestra version that you can watch a full orchestra playing it that accompany it, right? That version is what I taught in this lesson. It starts in the key of D minor, right? So seventh fret of the third string. And then the second half of that original version starts uh, over in the key of G minor. So, so 12th fret of the third string is what we do here, just like I taught in this lesson. Now they did that in the 2018 opening credits on TV. And then what happens is the next year on TV, it's the opening credits are only in the key of G minor. So if you watch the 2019 opening credits, it's all G minor. And then it, it kind of goes through it once, and then it kind of just vamps on the G minor, you know. So, uh, and then what happens is 2020, they start again in the key of D minor, 
And then this time they go up to the key of F minor. All that means is you just move the original shape that I taught you, but your starting note is now the 10th fret of the third string. In other words, it's a whole step lower than the G minor version, right? G minor starts on the 12th fret of the third string because F is a whole step below G, right? It's two notes on the piano, it's two frets on the guitar. We just move everything down by two frets. Okay, so that's what we did in 2020. But then in 2021, they went back to the D minor in the first half. And then up to G minor in the second half. Okay, that's 2021. Just like I taught it in this video. But then in 2022, 2023, 2024, they have been consistent with D minor in the first half and then F minor in the second half. So 10th fret here, right? I'll include both of these tabs in my PDF and make it very clear which ones to follow. I just wanna make sure that um, you know, you're following along with the song, you wanna play it, and if you wanna play it over the opening credits, that you understand this key change different. It's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know why they're doing it. My guess is, you know, the original version was 2018. They recorded it uh, for that orchestra and everything. At some point, you know, they did the, in 2019, they had that shortened version, which is only in G minor. I kind of get that, right? Let, let, like, let's end on um, the version that the original version ends on, right? G minor. But then um, why did they change it to F minor for 2020, 2022, 23, 24? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's something to do with the instruments in the orchestra. I doubt that because they originally recorded it in G, in from D minor to G minor. So I would assume that that was the ideal thing. Um, Maybe it's more cinematic. Maybe the guy who composed it wanted to, you know, he always kind of thought that F minor would work better, right? The, the final note here, right? I'm kind of getting nerdy about, about all this stuff. And I'm not, I'm, not a music, I'm not a music theory expert or anything. Check this out. If we switch to F minor, after the end of the first phrase, we go down a whole step. So it kind of, um, it almost reminds me of driving where, oh, I just had a thought too, where you downshift almost like in movies they do it to, well, I guess this would be an upshift because your, your RPMs are going lower, right? You were right here at the end of the first phrase, but if we switch to the key of F, then we're going down, right? Also, F is the minor third of... D minor, so maybe from a music point of view that was in, that was appealing. I don't know. Or maybe it's Formula One, F1, they wanted to end in the key of F. Maybe that's it too. That's my original, <laughs> not original. Well, it is original. That's the thought I had about 30 seconds ago. Anyway, that's it for this music theory note of the key change. Uh, I just discovered this this morning and I realized after I recorded my lesson, I'm like, crap, I'm going to have to re-record everything. How could I be wrong? How can I not do the QA? But um, I think the answer was I did do the QA just on the wrong version of the YouTube channel and I, I watched them all just now. I played along and I can confirm this is the uh, this is the key guide, okay? So I'll put this in my PDF. I'm just a completionist and I wanted to let you know. All right, friends, so I hope you found this helpful and uh, wanted to share because again, I, I love hearing the song. It gets me pumped up every weekend morning when F1 starts and uh, I want to share this with you. So head on over to my website to get all the bonus stuff for this lesson and uh, my practice notes, the scale charts, all that kind of thing. And I'll see you in the next lesson. And uh, until then, my friends, take care and bye-bye.